Hello everyone, I am Nutrix and today we are talking about the Uno Synth Pro. Now, the Pro, I talked about my first impression by unpacking it and looking at, you know, basic tour of the machine and play, playing back some of the presets and it sounds really good. Today what I'll do is I'll go through the sound synthesis engine of this. So a guided tour of the synthesis of the Uno Synth Pro. This synthesizer, compared to many analog synthesizers today, um, it is well designed, it sounds good, it sounds analog, it has some oomph, it has some character, it has its own sound, and there's many reasons for that. There are three oscillators with variable shape, which is pretty awesome because you don't have to stick between just you know sawtooth and square and sine wave, but in between also, which is really nice. And there's actually two filters. Again, really interesting because you don't see that lot of synthesizer with two filters. And in this way, in this case, there's many ways to combine them. So it also opens up to a lot of things. So we'll look at that. And um, the matrix, the modulation matrix is uh, really surprisingly powerful. Um, to the point that when you look at it, when you analyze the matrix itself, you go, well, it's basically almost like an modular synthesizer. I mean, I mean, modulation could send control to other modulation and they could, so it really, it can really become interesting and intertwined. So we'll look at this also um, gradually because, you know, we won't go too deep in the modulation matrix, but you'll, you'll see how powerful it, it can be. So let's start with the oscillators. That's, that's the basic, actually, no, before that, my pet peeve is to actually understand the internal schematics of a synthesizer, to understand how the three oscillators interact before they go into the mixer, before they go into the filter or the filters. You know, all of these steps are really important to me to understand. When they say there's a sync, okay, who's syncing who? Is it like two syncing to one, which is most of the time what happens? Uh, is it three syncing to two? You know, how does it work? So. What I did, I looked around to figure out if there was a, you know, schematic somewhere. I didn't find any. So I built my own by reading and using it. So I'll show you my schematic one here. So when you look at it, you see that this thing has many things. There's three oscillators, so oscillator one, two, and three. The three of them, they have control over the wave shape and the tuning. You have also a noise generator and external input. Between oscillator one and two, you have a sync so sync two can be synced to one. So sync speed can be re-triggered to follow sync uh, the speed of oscillator one. Same thing between three and one. So you can have sync two, sync three, or sync two and three. So either the second one is synced, or the third one is synced, or the second and the third one are synced to the first one. So different ways to do it. There's a ring modulation between one and two. Ring modulation is basically the sum and differences when you combine two uh, waveforms together, two frequencies together. There's an FM modulation amount, so one can modulate two and modulate three, which is kind of a weird way to do it. Uh, but then this FM amount is hidden somewhere in there. So we'll look, some of these are really obvious, and others, uh, other features are kind of hidden somewhere. They're not in the panel itself, and that's why I like to have this little graphic because um, the panel itself does not show you the internal schematics. I would love to have, even on, on the panel itself, somewhere like here, a graphic of the internal connection. So you go, okay, oh yeah, there's a sync. Sync is between two and one, okay, fine. And then it just reminds you how this thing is built. So I would love to have this. I find that always useful. Because I mean, you have many synthesizers. When you go back to one that you haven't used for many months, and then you go, okay, um, where is the filter? Is it before distortion or not? Where is the distortion? Is that at the end? So it's, it's fun to know in a graphic where it is. So then after these three, or actually four, so oscillator one, two, and three, plus the noise and oh, external input, they can be combined together before going to the filter section, which is filter one, which is an OTA, which is basically a tuple high pass or low pass, so a 12 dB per octave low pass or high pass. Mostly sound like the original Uno synth, that's what they tell us. And the filter two, um, which is a two pole or a four pole, so a 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave slope, low pass SSI. Well, if you don't know what SSI is, 
I'm going to put a link down in the description, but um, look into IK Multimedia YouTube channel and you will find a very good interview with the people behind SSI. Basically, they're the same people who created EMU system back in the days. And if you don't know that EMU, before being one of the sampler renowned company, they were basically doing modular synthesizers. So the SSI is one of the, if you want technology or design for these uh, analog filters. Uh, so you have this one here. And so what's interesting here is you have two filters. You, you have that in some synthesizers, but what's different, and if I move my graphic a little bit higher, this comes from the manual of the Uno Synth Pro, you have 24 ways of combining these two filters. So they can be normal phase or out of phase, each of them. They can be, in this case of the first, second one, can be two-pole or four-pole. Same thing with the first one. So there's different options here. Um, you can have them in series. So you go into the first one, then the second one. So these two are low pass, or you can go low, high pass and low pass, high pass and low pass, out of phase, in phase, um, four pole. So there's a different combination, only one or only the other. You can have them in parallel also, which is interesting. And keep in mind that what you don't, what you don't see here is that you can actually link the two together. So when you move the filter cutoff point, the two moves at the same time, and you can space them also. There's a spacing value. So you can move them at the same time, but you can, but you can separate them. So they're away, but they move with the same movement. Or you can separate them and they don't move at the same speed. So it's interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's very powerful when you look at it. And it might be misleading for people who never used a synthesizer with two filters. Um, and you might create some stuff that actually kill the sound. So if you're not sure, just pick one of the two that you find that has the sound you want, start with it, and then try adding the second one after you did something you like with the first oscillator, one or two, whatever you like. And then that's it. You just build on top of what you already did. That sounds good. Okay, um, then you have two envelopes, a filter envelope, ADSR, and uh, amplitude envelope, ADSR, and a BCA. You also have LFOs that can be sent to, you actually have two LFOs, it can be sent to different places, of course, but the modulation matrix is a lot more complex than just say, oh, LFO to filter. By default, these are the traditional ways of sending it, you know, uh, envelope to filter, envelope to amplitude, that's, you know, the default values, but it can be, much more happening in here. So now keep in mind that there's also hidden features and I'll look, I'll look into these with you guys. So one thing that you have to understand is you have a lot of function you can find just by moving in these little section here. Some of them like oscillator has two options. You have a line of waves, so wave shapes and the sync. Second line is tuning plus the ring modulation. Mix only have one. Filter has two because there's, but it doesn't change here. It changed on this section here when you say filter one and filter two. LFO, same logic, LFO one, LFO two. So this doesn't change, but you're actually switching between one and two. Filter and for the envelope, amplitude envelope, matrix, the modulation number, the source of the modulation, the destination of modulation, and the amount of modulation and the effects drive, modulation, so it's basically flinging, a chorus, and, you know, and you have delay and reverb. So this is the layout by default, but if, let's say we go into oscillator. Of course, you've got tuning, tuning, and tuning, but if you go here, if you press on this, you then go into the edit. You have a little bit more control here. Now, right now, I'm just changing the tuning because we're in tuning. But if I press back and this one here, I'm gonna dive into a lot more control just for oscillator one. I've got the wave, if I go back again, that oscillator one, two, three, glide. So glide, amount of glide, and the type of glide, content, time, and content speed, two different, different ways of doing it. I move back from this, you got mixer, you got filters, you got filter envelopes, Amplitude envelope, LFOs, matrix, effects, rename, and initialize. So I'm going to start with initialize sound. Yes. I'm actually working with the beta OS version 
uh, that should be released in around 24 of June 2021. So I might have some things that you haven't seen before, or it might even change from the one I have right now. So what you have here is a little bit different than the original firmware. When you go from one side to the other, you have like 99 cents of uh, micro tuning. And when you go past that, it becomes semitones. So you have very micro tuning and then up to 24 semitones. But let's say you want to say, well, it might, I'm going to 20, I don't know, to 12, but I want to have semitones also. And you go with a little thing here, a little knob here, you turn, and then you're going to have also scent. So you don't lose it. Really interesting. So a well-designed well way to do it. In case you have this, that's the tuning. You get the um, ring modulation here. You put it on or off. Get the shape here. Let's go back to the first one. I only have the first one. So what I can do now, if I actually can go in and say, well, um, I'm going to take the shape of Oscillator 1 and change it. So now it's a sawtooth. More like a triangular waveform. Pulse width. Square wave. Let's actually go back now to combining them. You've got the sync here, sync two. Again, you need to bring the volume for. Sync basically means that the second oscillator will sync to the first one every time it goes to the end of a cycle of the speed of the first one. So the first one oscillates, I mean, goes up and down, like, I don't know, square. When you get to the end of one cycle, it's triggering it again. The second one, second oscillator, if um, it plays anything out of tune, every time it gets to the end of the first one doing its own cycle, it will be forced to recycle itself. So it will create a new shape basically because you're forcing it to recycle while it's not finished. So the shape you'll have will create a new sound, a new timber, but still it's going to be in tune with the first one. So that's why even if I detuned, still in tune with the first one. Get the sync for three to sync to the first one, two sync to the first one, or two and three sync to the first one. Is, is that it? Well, actually, again, if you press a little button here and you switch to actually, I'm going to go in oscillator two, click on it. You've got the wave shape, you have the tuning, you get the sync value, you get the ring, and you have FM amount. Press on it and get the amount of the FM. <laughs> kind of hard industrial noisy stuff um if i'm you can do a lot with it um but i mean this is a simple way of doing fm but again if you go into the modulation matrix you could assign an, an envelope or an lfo to this amount so you can make it become really complex and moving like a real fm synth pretty interesting so that's for the oscillator Let's go into the mixer section. It's simple, the level, 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 and noise. So you can bring the volume of the noise. We'll say, well, we just had a uh, external input. Where is that? Do we have any control? Again, press on this little button here. 
Let's see if we have anything. You have volume here. We've got external in route. Click on it. Now you have a control over. You want it to the external input to be pre filter or post filter. So that's the only option. You don't have a volume per se for the audio coming in. So you'll have to control whatever you're sending to it to be the right volume, which is okay at the same time. It's we have the filters. We'll be in the filters. Now the filters are really uh, something different. You've got one and two. Let's be with the first one. We have this one. Okay. Let's work with this. With the filter. Close the filter. You've got resonance. So very nice. But if, but not distortion, not not super aggressive. Then there's we're in the first one here. We've got envelope amount of envelope one, envelope two. The spacing between the two, the cutoff uh, frequency you can space them between filter one and two, and we got the mode. Mode is the one that we want to really work with. The mode is this: low pass, two pole, in phase, out of phase. I pass in phase, out of phase, and bypass. So it's a two pole I pass or low pass, in phase or out of phase. Actually, you're gonna go bypass and filter two now. Filter two. This one becomes self oscillating. It's a really cool one. It sounds really aggressive. And again, you have a different modes here. So you have the two pole, low pass in Siri, four pole, so. Low pass in parallel, low pass in parallel again, but the four pole and the bypass. Bypass in Siri, bypass in parallel. So let's try now. I'm gonna go here, bypass, filter wind. Filters, do we have more stuff? Back, you have the resonance, the cutoff, the mode, the envelope amount, track amount. Tracking amount is you want to, the keyboard tracking. So this is interesting. If you want a keyboard to go high, uh, as you go high, you want the filter to open up. As you go down, you want the filter to close. So it's a very logic way of controlling your filter. Now that I have an envelope of filter going to you, something interesting is in the envelopes. In this case, let's go back again to the little button here. And then back one step. You've got attack, decay, sustain, release, retrigger, and loop. The loop is really interesting. If you turn on the loop on, <laughs> 
So it becomes a retriggering of the loop. So it's kind of a complex LFO if you want. You can change the attack also. This is really fun. So that's the looping on this thing. Let's go into the matrix. Matrix, you've got modulation. You've got source, you've got destination, you've got amount. So let's say you say, I want to have my first modulation. There's, you've got 16 different slots of modulation, something we see often in different synthesizers. Velocity, after touch. I mean, the amount of sources, look at the amount here. All of these can be source of modulation. Noise can be a source of modulation. Filter cutoff value can be source of modulation. So when you move the filter cutoff value, you could control something else, whatever it is. You could control the amount of delay if you want. Uh, spacing, LFO1. So all of these values that you see on screen are all different sources. Oh, and you see the gate in CVN. So there's two gates, two CVs. So also it becomes part of your modular kit if you have one, or even if it's not modular, I've got a couple of, I mean, honestly, most of the gear I have right now here, I have either CV gate in or out, because it's so popular today that, so it's easy to say, well, I'm going to control some of the part happening here from my TR8S or from my uh, Novation circuit uh, mono station, because they've got gates in and CV outs and all that stuff. So becomes interesting. What else? We have also, um, but, but, but we we're here, um, accent, gate, tie. So this is linked to the sequencer. And you have, that's it. So very, very a, a wide range of, and I like the fact that you can use the tuning as a source of modulation, the level, the noise, all of these can be basically a source to control something else. So it means also that if you have, let's say, an LFO that tends to control the volume of oscillator three, you could still use the volume of oscillator three to control something else. So you still can have a cascade of modulation happening. So it, it, it can, that's why I'm saying it become really complex and it can be closer to a modular thinking when you look at how it can modulate and control. 16 of them can be active at the same time, which is pretty powerful. And the destinations, uh, well, basically the same thing, off pitch, volume, tuning, wave shape, level for all of the serpent ones and the FM amount we talked earlier, the tuning, the wave level, again, filter cutoff, resonance, filter, LFO wave, LFO rate, uh, amount, envelope amount, delay, reverb, modulation amount. So all of these effects also are there, CV gate and out, accent amount for the sequencer. And the last one is basically the amount itself. So pretty, pretty efficient. I mean, this is just kind of a really well designed, a lot of options of in and outs, and I like that a lot. The last one is the effects. Effects is basically you have a drive. You can drive your sound. So you have the drive, you have a modulation which is uh, chorus, flanging. Again, if you want to know more about what you can do with mod, in this case, you have four controls and they basically just bring the amount, amount of modulation, amount of delay, amount of reverb. But if you want to control them separately and have more control into them, you actually press again on the little button and then you've got, um, which one am I in? I'm going to go back. Modulation, perfect. Modulation, it's this one. Turn this one off, off. Let's bring this one on. Modulation, what you have, type, you get chorus, phaser, and flanger. And for each of them, when you go back, you have a mode, synth one, two, strings, so different ways that the chorus works or the flensing work, so this changes depending on which one you select. Go back, you've got intensity, you've got rate, and you have amount. In this case, the button you have here is only the amount,
But what you have in here, you have the rate. So basically. <laughs> Okay, amount, same thing. Now we go with delay. Now, same logic. If you press on the button, you have the type, ping pong, doubler, stereo, mono, ping pong, left, center, right, left, center, right, left, center, right. So these are the options you have. And you click on it, actually back, go, yes, sync. You want it to be synced to tempo or not, and time well, because here you only have the volume, the amount of delay. So. And then you have, if you go back one step, feedback, you want it to, or you don't want that to be just like, plays one, st one time it stops. So. Uh, and the last one is filter. Filter is, you can actually filter out frequencies on the delay sound. So uh, you can have your delay playing, but it, go, it becomes duller and duller and duller. Actually, let's go back to feedback, give it a little bit more. So we have. Okay, let's go back here, filter. Let's cut frequencies. That's kind of an obvious one. filtered version. And you have the amount. That's it. Now, the next one is reverb. If you turn on reverb, you basically have the same logic. If you press on reverb, you go type. Am I in the right place? No. Reverb here. So the type of reverb, a hall, plate, reverse. Go back to hall, back, you have the pre delay, you have the size, you get the time, time low, and time high, which is interesting because you can have a lot of reverb in the lows and a short reverb in the highs. So that the low frequencies rumbling, whereas the highs are not, do the other way around. Uh, time low. It's kind of an EQ if you want on, on the reverb itself. And the filter again, you can have filter frequencies. So the, the reverb sound itself can be filtered. And the amount, which is the knob you have here. A couple of little things are also really interesting. If you go into setup, you still have access to this little window here. You have the master tuning, the MIDI, the sync, the keyboard, the pitch wheel. You can enter in all of these. Master tuning, well, you can detune the whole machine. Let's go back. The MIDI, the channel in and out, soft, true interface, program change, you want to receive it or not, you know. Uh, but what's interesting, you've got sync, you want to be master or slave, but one thing that I was kind of surprised to have is you have the keyboard, you press on it, you have velocity, of course, you can play with this, the way the velocity will respond, this transpose of the keyboard. But there's a scale, interesting enough, let's say minor pentatonic, okay? So these keys now only have the pentatonic. So a very, very powerful little synthesizer, little be because it's not that big, but it's not that little. <laughs> it's still a big piece of metal. This is very heavy. This is all metal. This is the pro version. If you want the smaller one, if you don't do tour, or if you don't, you know, moving around, um, the desktop version might be the best option for you. It's a smaller size, basically the size of this panel here, plus a keyboard. and it's it's the same brain so it's the same brain in a different box that's it 
uh, I got to tell you, uh, IQ Multimedia, you did a great job with this. Uh, it's it's a very small package, a lot of punch, a lot of good ideas in there. Uh, of course, I'm, a, I'm much more graphic in the way I work with a, a, a software. So I'd be interested in, in, in seeing maybe a um, interface, uh, an editor librarian or something that you see the whole thing in front of you and you go, okay, that's the one I want. And all these little hidden features that are in the menus could be in your face right away. That'd be way cooler uh, to rapidly grab it, but you don't always have a screen with you. So still everything is there and you just need to know where, that, where, it, where, it's, where it's at. Now, if you guys want to have a little graphic I did, um, I can actually put them in a PDF and people can download it. If it's just asking the, if I have any people asking for it, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there so that people can actually download it. That's it. Next step, I think I'm going to play with the sequencer and the RPG there in the song mode to try to understand how this works. And I'll do another video about that. That's it, guys. Stay safe. Make music. See you soon. Cheers. Thank you.